and uh, not knowing the ratio, no cranks, and no cassette, nothing. All I need one single speed ride, come back. The practice was from Bangalore to Birdi, from Birdi to Ramnagar, one day from Bangalore to Kanakpur. Those are the practices we used to do. Then the first race was for me was in 1976. After when we started finding out how people friendly, the way they look at you, the way they treat you, it was it was it was unbelievable. You know, unbelievable. Yeah, Africa is one of the best country. I would say I traveled. I am Venki, a working professional in IT as well as an amateur masters athlete and a coach for endurance sports. You are listening to the Working Athlete Podcast. Here, I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, I have a small request from you. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also let me know what you like and what you would like to listen to more of by commenting in the comment section on YouTube. I promise to do my best to improve with each episode and bring you the best content that helps you and me get better each day. In this episode, we talk to Satish Marate Rao. Satish is a celebrity chef who has hosted the likes of late Dr. Abdul Kalam as well as who's who of Bollywood film personalities. He is also the Karnataka state cycling champion back in the 70s and toured the world on his bicycle before settling down in the US. He is 65 years young now and still rides his bike like a champ. He was part of the tour of Nilgiris this year along with his close friend Wheel Sports Winky and I took this opportunity to sit down with him to talk about his cycling days back in the day. It was so fascinating to hear about Bangalore cycling back in the 70s and the stories from his tour around the world on a bicycle. I had a blast and I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. This episode is brought to you by The Bike Affair. If you are in search of a one-stop destination that caters to all your cycling needs, our today's sponsor, The Bike Affair, is the perfect place to check out. I have known the founders of The Bike Affair, Krish and Gokul, personally for nearly 15 years now. In fact, my first century ride was with Krish back in 2008. They are both exceptional human beings and entrepreneurs that believe in providing exceptional service to their customers. And it shows. With over 14 years of experience, The Bike Affair has established itself as a trusted source offering honest advice and exceptional service. They are offering a special treat for the listeners of this podcast. You can enjoy a 10% discount on your first order by using the code BIKEYWINKY on their website. So if you are in Hyderabad, visit their door in Kondapur. Or if you are anywhere else in India, shop online by using the link thebikeaffair.com. I will leave the link in the show notes. Now, enjoy the podcast. Hi, Satish. Welcome to the Working Athlete Podcast. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much, Venki. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much, Venki. It's my pleasure to be part of your show. So, Satish, um, um, what I wanted to speak to you about uh, is, you know, you come with a rich experience of uh, cycling, uh, back in the day, uh, when I was maybe you know, one or two years old, <laughs> yeah. so I I I seen some of the uh, photos from uh, photos of yours from back in the day, and I was like, it was mind blowing to see. So I was always curious to know more about that time, um, and uh, you know what went on, how would uh, you know what was the kind of training methods you guys used. What were the you know what was the cycling scene like back then and all that, and I mean I've been chasing you for a while. And, you know, <laughs> finally here yeah. on TFN I cornered you. <laughs> thanks for thanks for cornering me. I appreciated that. Yeah. yeah. So thanks, <clears throat> uh, thanks for agreeing to do this. Uh, and let us start by talking about uh, you know how 
when you got into cycling? Okay, <clears throat> cycling, I started as a hobby. Uh, as an hobby as well as a necessity because those days uh, my father was a catering contractor. I had to go places from one place to other place that look at the catering. So the mode of transportation was a bicycle. So I started riding bike here and there and I met few bike riders uh, since my father owned a small cafeteria in Kantirawa Stadium. So I used to see all those bikers coming up there and I was so fascinated with all those racing handlebars and I never even rode a bike up until then about the racing bike. And uh, finally got one bike, begging for my father, uh, bought Atlas bike and got all the handlebars from different places and made it look like a racing bike. And started going with the guys, riding, riding, riding. And uh, somehow somebody found out that I can ride a little faster than the regular bike. So I was selected as a Karnataka state cyclist uh, after riding for almost like in a year. Then I started uh, riding, practicing here only in Karnataka. Uh, the so, let me give a timeline to this. It was 70, I would say about 76, mm -hmm. 75, 76. Yeah. Those are the days. Yeah. Uh, that time, I would say I was about 15 years old, you know. So uh, I didn't know why, about nowadays you have that uh, the FTF and all of the stuff. We didn't have nothing. Just ride the fastest you can ride, mm -hmm. you know, how fast you can climb. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Nothing else to biking. I didn't have no knowledge at all. Mm -hmm. And not knowing the ratios, no cranks, and no cassette, nothing. All I knew, one single speed, right, come back. The practice was from Bangalore to Birdi, from Birdi to Ramnagar, one day from Bangalore to Kanakpur. Those are the practices we used to do. Then the first race was, for me, was in 1976. That was <clears throat> from Bangalore, Banergata, you know, where the Christ College is, mm -hmm. by Milk Dairy Palm. It was sponsored by Nippon Company. And uh, that was to go to Banergata and come back. And that was the first race I won. It wasn't a state level. It was just a race sponsored by Nippon. Mm -hmm. Later on, I found out it was a state level. Oh. When I went road, I wasn't selected to ride that ride. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be there with my bike. And they said, you want to ride? I said, yes, because we had a few people came from Chamraj Pet. And we come actually to look at the race. Mm -hmm. And the guy said, you want to ride? I said, yes. So I won that race first. Wow. So, so you, you went to watch the race, race. Uh, on your bike. Bike, right. You happened to be on the bike, so they asked you to participate. Right, you... right. They asked me, do you want to ride? I said, yes. <laughs> and you won the race. I won the race. <laughs> yes, I, I won the race. And the participant was Bijapur. Kuruni was there. Mm -hmm. And Tatu was there. Harnar was there. They were all surprised to see a guy from Chabrat Pet you know, winning a race. And uh, it, it, was, it was a big deal for me since uh, my father was very disappointed not putting too much uh, uh, interest in school. I was right, riding bike, bike, bike all day. And uh, when it came on the newspaper, that was I was a uh, state champion without knowing I was a state champion. <laughs> that took me back and I was surprised. Then I put my mind into it. I said, I can do something right. that I never thought I will do it. <laughs> so, and back in the day, uh, even then, Jamkandi, the riders from Jamkandi, right. uh, you know, or the, Guys, yeah. guys, the Bagal Court, Jamkandi, Bijapur, Raichur, Jamkandi mm -hmm. riders were the fastest riders those days. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to ride with those guys during the Dasra race. We used to have a, I don't know whether they have it now. Mm -hmm. Those days we have a Dasra, Mysore Dasra race starts from Kariapa Circle in Madikeri, come to Mysore Palace Ground, and that, that's where it ends. And I rode with them a few rides, but never won, uh, because all the hills, and, and I wasn't prepared to, you know. Uh, those are the things I rode with them. So nationals, after that, I, I was selected after the Nippon race. I was selected as an official Karnataka rider since I won it. Mm. Then I, I was trained by the coaches. We used to train in, I, did, I used to do, coach, they used to coach me for a velodrome as well as the road. So then it wasn't one ride. One ride. You take a one bike, change the wheels and just ride. Now you change the cogs for the fixie or you do the free wheels. So that was the thing. The frame is same, the bike is same, rider is the same, only the cassette in the back, the cog from the fixie becomes a free wheel and free wheel becomes. But road riding yeah. will be like free wheel? Free wheel. Speed, right. And, and for track, it will be cog, cogs. Cogs, fixie, cog, cog fixie, yes. Yeah. So when you, uh, when you won that race, and uh, you know, it came uh, in the papers as a state champion, right. and it kind of, uh, you know, was a watershed moment where yes. you realized I could do something. Right. What was the reaction of your dad? My dad was, uh, I, I would say, 
he was taken back. Uh, he, he couldn't believe himself. The guy come from a poor family. My father was a caterer, and my picture was in the the first page of uh, Deccan Herald and uh, Prajawani newspaper. And um, he from then he started supporting me. You know, so then I never looked back. It's went on till today. I write. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So that was seventy six. You said right. So uh, from then on, how did your riding training under the national coaches? Yeah. Then I was selected as an Indian. They collect, selected me as an Indian team cyclist. Mm. Then myself, Kurni, Arnal, and a few other riders from here. They were Sagayam, Arthur Rodriguez. We used to ride together. Then they sent us to Patiala for our practices. So the HR was coming in '82. Mm. Then we were st- already started practicing '79, '78 uh, to HR. So they had sent us to Patiala to practice to, in order to select few riders to ride in Asia. So I was one of the luckiest from Bangalore and the few of them from Bijapur. And I uh, went tra- trained there for almost five, six months in Patiala and uh, went down the hill one time and broke my ankle. Uh, the chain came off and rolled the chain on my ankle and I broke my ankle. So I was in the hospital for almost two months in mm-hmm. Patiala. And that disqualified me from Asia. Oh. Yeah. So th- that was sad. I couldn't uh, keep up with the speed. I was very much disappointed. You know, so cycling was, uh, I always thought cycling going to take me to this next level, wherever I am. Uh, nobody believed me. Uh, my parents believed, didn't believe me. And uh, when I was, I found out that I wasn't qualified for Asia, I was so disappointed. I, I don't even want to come back to Bangalore. Mm-hmm. That's because Bangalore people had a high expectation. Mm-hmm. Even chief minister then was a Gundu Rao. Mm-hmm. He was thinking Then we had a sports minister, Jeevraj Arwa. Mm-hmm. They were all hoping that one guy from, <laughs> yeah. from Bangalore will come. Uh, I was disappointed. I'm getting a little emotion here. Yeah. And uh, I thought my life was ended. <laughs> right. No, that I can still see the emotion in your yeah. eyes uh, all these years later. Yeah. Um, that, that must have been a, quite a uh, you know, disappointment. But yeah. uh, how did you take it from there? Well, uh, I, I don't want to come home. From Patiala, I took my bike, started riding to Bangalore. Mm. I was supposed to come on the train. I didn't took the train. I said, I'm going to ride. Mm. I, I had some backpack, little clothes mine, and didn't have no money, enough for cash. Yeah. So people on the way helped me. So I traveled pretty much half India at that time to come to Bangalore. Mm. Then I decided to go on the world tour because I had read about a few people who had gone on the world tour, mm. not knowing I needed the passport, and I didn't know they needed a visa. I didn't even know what visa was. Mm. So, you know, I decided to... Planned everything, planned and got the passport. And I, uh, then it was, after, I think, uh, George Fernandez was the minister. So he helped me get, because I was in the national team. Yeah. So I had little connections here. Then he got me a passport. Mm-hmm. Then went and got the letters from Rotary Club, was sponsored me, Lions Club sponsored me, hoping that I will ride only in India. Mm-hmm. But uh, my whole idea was traveling around the world. You know, not knowing good English, broken English here and there. And I wasn't sure I'm going to do it. But behind my mind said, I will do it, you know. So got all the sponsorship from YMCA, Youth Hostel, just name it. I got a letter from everyone and um, went to Delhi, all the consulate, got visas for Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all these closest countries. I didn't even know how to get there, but I planned to get a visa. Mm. And uh, the day came in and I met a good friend of mine, he's a Mohan from Alsur. He was a rider as well. He wasn't a state level rider, but he was a local, like we call it weekend warriors nowadays. Right. So he came and joined me and he said, I want to join you. So then we had a Raja cycle shop, not the Raja one town hall. There was a guy right in by commercial street other side. He used to, he was a national team cycling mechanic, mm-hmm. you know, so he helped us to put all the bikes together and uh, bags and everything. Then we officially started from uh, Vishweshwaraya Museum, but then it used to be UB factory. Right. And uh, we flagged up there. Uh, we started from there, went to Delhi, uh, gave a momentum to M- Mrs. Gandhi, the prime minister then. Then we started down to Bombay. And meanwhile, we come to Bombay, we found out there was a war between Iran and Iraq. Okay. So there wasn't no, we can't go. Pakistan was out of the question that we cannot ride. So we, our first target was go to Iran, uh, Iraq and Iran, start from there and go down. 
to Turkey and all that stuff. And it didn't, didn't happen. So again, disappointed. Stayed in the, uh, Bombay for about two, three weeks. Then Shipping Corporation of India was grace enough to give us a free passage to Egypt, mm -hmm. from Bombay to Egypt. So that's by Suez Canal, while the ship was moving, the basket dropped us to the small ship, which was arranged by the Consulate General of Egypt. They came and picked us up because we were already had a diplomatic passport because mm -hmm. Indira Gandhi helped us to get the diplomatic. So we both had a diplomatic passport. So consulate knew how we were coming. They arranged, they picked up, then we went to uh, Fort Syed. From there, we started our African journey. Right. Okay. Before we proceed <clears throat> further, it's quite interesting. Yeah. But I want to kind of go into a little bit of detail and jog your memory on this. Okay. Um, so when you started from uh, the UB factory in Bangkok, right. and you rode to Delhi, right. how many days did it take? Ah, uh, if my memory is right, at least about 15 to 20 days. Yeah. 20 yeah. Days, uh, yeah. You used to ride uh, maybe 100, 200 kilometers. Yes, it depends on some days we might ride 50 to 60. We didn't have no Garmin, we didn't have mile. So we say, example, we leave Bangalore to go to Hyderabad. So we plan two or three stops where to stop. Okay, then we look for a YMCA or we're going to look for a a uh, Rotary Club member, someone to sponsor for a dinner or a lunch or to a war nice stay. That's how we went to Delhi. Right. We, we didn't have much money. We had that $500, which was collected in Bangalore. By then, it was a police inspector. I think he was a circle inspector called, um, uh, I can't even remember his name. Uh, very well-known uh, officer, circle, circle inspector. inspector. Yeah. He collected the money for us. He, he's called as a... Tiger, Karnataka Tiger, that's officer. Wow. Yeah. Now he's called Ta yeah. Karnataka Tiger mm -hmm. because he was involved with catching uh, Virapan and everything. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So with that money, kind of, that was your pool of money. Yeah, 5,000 rupees we had. Right. So then it was like a nine rupees for a dollar. Mm -hmm. So we went to Bombay too because Bangalore, uh, by the time the passport came in, they would not give us a dollar because we did not have a visa in the passport. Right. So we were in Bombay when we had all collected the visas. Mm -hmm. So we get, uh, we bought 500 US dollars for Thomas Cook. Mm -hmm. So that was like a voucher. Right. So we kept it that until I reached US. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never spent a penny on that. Right. It's, I kept dollar 5,000 from it. All the way to US, I had the five, $500. <laughs> wow. So you wrote to um, uh, Delhi. Uh, got uh, met uh, Prime Minister there. Prime Minister yeah. then Indira Gandhi. Yeah. And uh, gave her a moment. Uh -huh. Then wrote to Mumbai. Mumbai from there, yes. Uh, another? Another about 15 days. Yeah, another yeah. 15 yeah. days. And then it was already spread in the newspaper. Every town knew we were coming. Yeah. Right. So there was a warm welcome. There was a reception. Uh, then we don't need to look for a food. The food was at your <laughs> disposal. So right. it, it was a different experience. You know, once you were recognized, once they know who you are, that is totally a different experience. Yeah. yeah we felt like a VIP for a couple of days. <laughs> right. uh, so from then, from Mumbai, uh, Bobe at that time, yeah. uh, where was the next stop you said? Uh, so by the Shipping Corporation of India, then Mr. Gandhi, he's also a, happened to be a Gandhi, mm -hmm. and the Mr. Rao, they helped us to get a ticket. I mean, it's, it's a free. Right. So they put in, the, 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 that was a Kalinga, the tanker, big tanker. So to that, then Kalinga and Ashoka was the biggest tanker for Indian government. Right. So they put us in the tanker. We were put in the, the presidential uh, suite. suite. Mm -hmm. So we were sitting up there at the rough sea. Instead of four days trip to Egypt, it took us almost 15 days on the ship because it was the bad weather and we were all crying, never sat in the ship in my entire life. First experience, the ship was rolling like a ball on that, you know, it's like world's biggest ship, and right. <laughs> like a, pitching like a tennis ball. So we made it to Egypt. That's where all uh, my journey began. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the, so how, how was the touring in the Egypt, uh, you know, like, because India is still like, you know, right. home country, even if it is a different language, right. you would manage with Hindi or whatever, right? right. So how, how was it touring in a foreign land? Foreign land, that was my first, uh, you know, other than we had went to, for during my cycling period in Bangalore, I traveled to Sri Lanka, Singapore uh, for a race. So I had little knowledge about how foreign land going to look, how people are going to act looking at you. Once they see the sign on the says. Satish Rao cycling around the world on a bicycle. 
And everybody was interested, They're very friendly, nice, talking to us, offering their houses to stay, food. And most of our contact was a consulate general. So every time we go, we register there and say we are from India. And most of the time they knew we were coming. And either they do the fundraising or a Rotary Club will do the fundraising, give us little money for the next trip. So that's how we traveled. The experience was excellent, whether it is in Egypt or Kenya or Uganda, uh, any other countries, we were received very well. Mm. And we never had any bad experience. Like people always to say, you get robbed, you get high this. Never. In Africa, we got one of the the best reception. The, the Indians or the blacks, it doesn't matter who it was, uh, the tribal people. They openly invited into their huts or the house or the palace or the hotel, you know. So we really... Uh, we really enjoyed and we couldn't even believe what we are doing and how we will receive. Uh, it is like a dream come true. I thought we were in a fairy land, you know, like never even thought about it. That's how it was. Yeah. Egypt yeah. and uh, traveled in Africa and uh, good research. From Egypt, you said you went to Africa. Yeah, Uganda, Kenya, mm -hmm. Tanzania. Then we came to Djibouti, Somalia, to uh, Libya. From Libya, we took a ship to Greece via Cyprus and Crete Island, mm -hmm. you know. So we, it was like going around, coming back close to Egypt. So that's, uh, you know, that was also a shipping corporation of uh, India wanted to help us, but there wasn't ship available to go. Then there was a, uh, some local ship people gave us a free ticket mm -hmm. from Libya to, they wanted us to go to Italy, but we wanted to go to Greece. Mm -hmm. So that was a little longer trip. So there was two islands, which are Crete and Cy Cyprus. So we stopped there. We did not ride. You know, ship was docked there. We get out and look at the town, like a sightseeing people. Right. Then our European uh, travel started from Greece, Piraeus. That's where we landed. At the Piraeus is the uh, harbor, a yeah, small town close to Athens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before we get into the European sojourn of your uh, journey, mm -hmm. what what was, uh, you know, riding in Africa uh, around that time like? Because, uh, yeah. We were a little scared. Yeah. We were a little scared because, uh, you know, the, the stories we heard about it is uh, totally different. Right. And we, we were a little scared. I mean, we, even if some good friend, good people come approach and talk to you nicely, mm -hmm. we behind my head thinking, oh, they, are they going to rob us? Are they going to, you know, hurt us? You know, these are the things we had in behind. You know, that's the... the uh, the looking at other people, the color people, so call it, you know, that was a totally a different uh, feedback we had. Mm -hmm. When we went there, when we look at those people, that was the, one of the best people who openly called us to, even, even whether they are very well-to-do people or from a tribal areas like Tanzania and everything on the roads, you literally, you see a tribal people and they will call you to the hut. Mm -hmm. You know, once they found out that we are riding, they're like, come on, even, they couldn't speak the language, we couldn't speak our language. But it's a you know, sign, sign yeah. language. Yeah. And we were we were very much blessed, I can say it, you know. So that was one of the best experiences. Uh, even if I go to it, I don't think I'll get that experience. Yeah. That's how it was. The roads were worse than here. Mm -hmm. And the infrastructure was totally different. Even those days, Indian roads are not good, but here it was worse. Some of them are gravel, some of the. But we had a bike, which is Indian tires, Indian bike. And I, I'm sorry, I had an, a Benetton, an Italian bike. I had my other friend had a track bike. And we were received very well. Uh, we never even thought in our wildest dream that we will get hurt up there. After when we started finding out how people friendly, the way they look at you, the way they treat you, it was, it was, it was unbelievable, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Africa is one of the best countries I would say I traveled so far, you know, not counting the Europe and all this stuff. Yeah. So Europe, I expected is going to be a friendly people, seeing it, everything is white is bright. You know, that's that's kind of a, and that's how we felt. Correct. You know, those days we looked at the Texas wild pictures here in, you know, you know, good, bad, ugly movies, Clint Eastwood and all that stuff. Yeah. We had a different kind of thinking, you know. Yeah. But in Africa, I never seen all I thought Africa as elephant and uh, camels and you see tigers. It's not. You know, just like the other people thought about India, you have only camel well, and bull snake, party. Yeah. Snake, snake, snake chambers. chambers, yeah. Yeah. So it it wasn't like that. It was totally different. It was. Uh, uh, I, I was so innocent 
those days, being 18, 19 years old, I didn't know what to express, didn't know how to see it, how to express it. We were like innocent and somebody calls your house, you just go. Yeah. You know, the, by the time you are leave, they said, God damn, they gave us their own living room for us to sit down. Yeah. They gave the new blanket for us to sleep. They did not even give a used one. They get us a new blanket for us to sleep. Right. And they look after our bike outside. You know, they ask, do you want to wash your bike? I mean, forget about the loop, you know. This was this was, this was the experience money cannot buy, you know. Yeah. I will cherish that about my life. Mm. Yeah. And then you got to Europe. Yes. And started, uh, you know, riding around, yeah. tour, touring uh, in Europe. Yeah. What was it like? Europe was a different experience than Africa. Mm. Uh, Europe was, the roads are much better. Uh, the people were, well, you know, depends on, we were mostly uh, invited by the Rotary members of the Lions Club, whereas Africa didn't have much. And even if they had, we didn't know where it was. Mm -hmm. Here we were received by the locals, whereas here recused by the organizations, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a different experience, but it was a good experience. Uh, when we were in Athens, uh, we were met by a, a Olympic director, you know, uh, he had come and gave us the momentum and he found out that we were riding. Then uh, Yugoslavia, then it was a Yugoslavia. We, the, now there's no longer a Yugoslavia. And Yugoslavia, we had a bad experience. That was the we someone stole our passport and the bag and except our bike, everything was gone in Yugoslavia. Yeah. So we rode from Athens to Perios, Perios to Thessaloniki. We crossed the Yugoslavian border. So we had to wait. Those times it's a communist, it's an army, there's no police. How did you manage when everything was stolen? Yeah, what happened was uh, we reached Yugo uh, Belgrade. It was late because we were delayed in the border. Mm -hmm. And we knew the next stop was a Belgrade. In between, there's nothing. All the apple farms and uh, houses. And it was like just like Uti, muggy, foggy road. We made to uh, Belgrade, but we couldn't find a place to stay. So we chose a place to stay. It was a church. So we put our bike, we had a chain. So we chained the bike both together and we chained back to our leg. So that was the practice we did all the time in case somebody takes it. So at least wakes up because we ride a bit tired. Yeah. You know, you might not know it. So we woke up in the morning and we looked around, our bag was missing. Mm. In despite of chaining everything. Yeah. And that was the bag we had my passport. And that bag was below my head. Yeah. And maybe I was in so sleep. And my other buddy, he was also sleeping. Both our bag was gone, no passport, nothing. Once we found out, we started, I don't know, we are panicked. Communist country, and uh, we don't know what to do, no language. Then we knew where was the consulate. So we found the consulate, we went and told them. Then within 15 days from the Indian government, we got our passport. But what happened, all the previous pa visas were the passport were all gone. Uh -huh. So we did not, I had a few of them Xerox copy back in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So I had to call Bangalore and get all the copies back here and go to the local consulate up there in Yugoslavia. As we moved to Austria, wherever there was a consulate, we can got the visa. We showed them a copy and it was easy. Right. Uh, but uh, that one month period in Yugoslavia, instead of 10 days, mm -hmm. we end up staying a month because of the passport, then the visa. And it was, it was a different experience. I wouldn't say I, all the, my bike ride was smooth sail. Right. There are some time, the, you know, the winds went to the other direction. Right. So this is an experience, uh, who to trust, who not to trust. Mm. So it didn't happen in Africa. It happened in Europe. Right. And, you know, so it doesn't mean that to, uh, it happened in Europe means Europe is bad. Correct. You know, everywhere you go, there's one incident. So yeah. you cannot finger point at everybody. Yeah. It was our bad luck. Mm -hmm. And it was our good luck. We got an experience and we got our passport because the consulate was uh, right there. And they worked hard to get our passport. And they gave us accommodation to stay, mm -hmm. consulate. Mm -hmm. You know, every employee will say, come to my house today. Stay. Other will say, come to. They didn't have a budget for a host uh, guest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll go and stay in somebody's house. Yeah. That was a different experience. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then uh, from Europe, how... Uh, what was your next? Uh... Europe, I traveled pretty much uh, everywhere except Spain, mm -hmm. from Norway, Sweden, the Benelux, like Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, stayed in Germany. I rode instantly, you know, in German, I we spent about three months just in German, because German, Switzerland, and Austria is like all together, one, like one continent in itself, only three countries. Right. So then it was very friendly, very, uh, you know, the bike roads are very nice. They had a shoulder where you can ride, nothing to worry what cars are coming. You know, it, it was it was nice. Uh, from there, we reached uh, Calais in France. From there, we took a ship to London, from Calais to Dover. From London, we started riding to <coughs> uh, Scotland. 
Mm-hmm. Both at the A1, I guess, if I'm not wrong, the highway from London took me to Scotland via Maxborough, Birmingham, Manchester, Raleigh, and uh, <clears throat> to Edinburgh. We went to the land in Southampton Hall, London, and uh, we went to Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. Came back to London and flew to New York. And then that was also sponsored by someone else. Uh, it was a People's Express. Then it's a London's cheapest flight, $110 for both of us with the bicycle. Wow. So we landed in the U.S. Mm. Yeah. The meanwhile, I forgot to tell you, mm. when we were in Austria, it was a heavy snow. We couldn't ride. So we found a job selling newspaper on the street in Austria. Wow. So three months we stayed there. Mm. And one day, the guy, you know, we are in the freezing cold. I can put my hand, I can't give, I can't even give them a change. So everybody will give a, you know, shilling is coming. Right. So they will say, keep the change and they go, they, they thought I was acting because yeah. that it was freezing cold. I can't even take the cash back yeah. to give them a change. Yeah. So one day happened to be one gentleman came in a Mercedes and the Mercedes Benz was a common car up there. It's like we had a Fiat and ambassadors. That's everyone is a Mercedes. Yeah. This guy comes in and I said, uh, what are you doing here? Where are you from? I said, I'm from India. You, you are the guy who came on a bicycle? I said, yes. So he said, where do you live? I gave him the address. Next day, he came to my apartment. And I, I found out then he was the president of Puck Bicycle Company, P-U-C-H. Wow. So he took both of us to his bicycle, was in Strasbourg. So he, on his car. Yeah. Now, I, the first time I sat in Mercedes Benz. So uh-huh. from his car, he took it to his company, measured all our things, and built two custom bikes for us. And it was sponsored by him, two new puke bikes for us. Wow. So that was uh, amazing. <laughs> amazing, not approaching anybody. We went to Kalanago approach, they couldn't give us pay in Italy. Yeah. But in Austria, this was a two bike was given by him. I met him on the street and he took us and got us two bike. Beautiful bike. You know, it was nice with the pump, custom made, our name, everything was on it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And from then you were riding that? Uh, we were riding all the way to New York, that yeah. same bike I had, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you landed in uh, the US? Yeah. <laughs> And then, how, what was the journey? Did you do uh, food? Uh, I, I was wanted to do Katie Wright. Hmm. Katie Wright starts from New York all the way to Washington, then go to Virginia. What does Katie say? Uh, Katie, it's, it's called Katie. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I, I don't know idea what right. it says, yeah. but we still call it a Katie Wright. Right? Hmm. It crisscrosses the America, certain as the bike routes. Right. You know, it is specially made for those backpack riders who goes on the gravel bike. Even till today, they do it. Mm-hmm. We thought about it, but during the winter, we called off and we didn't have enough funds. Mm-hmm. And the U.S. was very expensive. So we decided to do a small round trip in New York itself, go to Albany, Buffalo, Rochester, and, uh, you know, New Jersey, and come back because during the winter time, we were there like June, July, and the winter started. So we could not even ride bike. Mm-hmm. So we stopped it. I worked in a small Indian restaurant as a dishwasher. My buddy went, worked for some other grocery store. And it's a mean job and this is what was allowed. Right. So I worked there. Then the Asia was coming. We wanted to come to India to see Asia 81. So we came back to India. Mm-hmm. So not planning that I'm going to go to US or settle down or uh, no idea at all. Right. And my friend, he said, I'm not going to come, you can go. Mm-hmm. So he settled down there. I flew to the India. I- India. Yeah. And uh, I came here, I wanted to see Asia. Went to the government people here, there, they arranged me a ticket. Then I went to what they said. Say, I saw all the cycling event in Asia, the road, the track, you know. Mm. Then came back to Bangalore. Then um, I don't know, I didn't know what to do. Right. So I said, I'll go back to visa, mm. to get a visa from the American embassy. Mm. Uh, I went to Delhi, they stamped me a visa. I went to US. Mm. Uh, not I'm going to go to work. I said, I have to do something. Let's see what's going to, life going to take me to the next level. Uh, Somehow I stuck in the industry of a restaurant. And that's the only job I knew, mm-hmm. watching dishes, doing things. Mm-hmm. So I learned from there and I never looked back. <laughs> uh, but that, that journey itself is also, you know, quite inspiring, right? Yeah, I don't know, inspiring, but it was. But it's make it look very easy. It wasn't easy, you know, working exactly. odd hours. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hotel industry itself, yeah. hospitality industry itself is a quite uh, yeah, yeah. field to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, for someone uh, who did not have any connections anywhere to, you know, start from scratch. Yes. Uh, you know, from washing dishes. Right. To, to you know, however many years it took right. to the uh, position you are in right. now. Yeah. It is uh, quite a journey. It is quite a journey. I didn't even expect. And um, 
the things I have in my life today, I don't think, I, I, I think I, I, I got more than I deserve. Yeah, I can put that word. Uh, I was very lucky enough. I worked in the restaurant. I learned pretty much uh, basic things. Then I happened to go and um, join the college where I can learn things of hotel management. Oh. So I did go to CIA. It's a culinary institute of America. It's like going to Harvard. Right. And uh, that was helped by a gentleman in New York. Uh, his name is Dr. Shetty. And he looked at me and said, you speak very good English. I mean, then I was speaking English. So I said, you should go to college and I'll help you. So he took me to the college, and second thing, I was enrolled. Wow. And I got a scholarship. And how many years? Uh, that was five years course. Five years course, I did two years course. Mm. And I couldn't do the other three because I had to pay my bills. I didn't come from a family where I can. I had to work day and night. Mm. I had art, four art jobs mm. to pay my bills. Then I had to take care of my family back in India. Right. So they, they wasn't expecting anything, but behind my mind, I had to do something. Right. You know, so... It was a lot of commitments. Mm. So I couldn't do the five years course. I did the two years course. And the college told me, I will pay for it. Come back. Mm. You know, the dean of the college called me, Mr. Vasanov. Mm. Said, Mr. Satish, come, I'll pay for you. Mm. Then I couldn't do it. I stayed back. I did the valet parking <clears throat> in New York, where the Madonna lived. Madonna, Paul Sorvino, and uh, Kelvin Klein, they lived in the same building. Mm. So I did the valet parking in that building. So I'd see Madonna every other day. Right. She'll come for a car and I'll bring her car back. Yeah. I used to do the valet parking park mm -hmm. coming in. I did the floral uh, designing with the uh, Shibui company in New York. And uh, I used to do floral designing at the Donald Trump's house. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, Mr. Hess, Donald Trump, uh, Charles Bronson's house. I did a lot of houses because this company where I worked, mm -hmm. they had all the high-end flowers. They do the, their clients was high-end. Right. So I used to go to those houses, you know, so that's something to brag about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a pictures with Madonna those days. Right. I've taken a couple of pictures. Yeah, right. yeah. So from then, uh, what was this, uh, you know, when, uh, what was the transition like from then to like uh, starting your restaurant and stuff? Okay, uh, I was in New York, then um, I got my green card mm -hmm. in 1989. 87, I'm sorry. I got my green card in 87. Then I could come to India and go back. Then that the five years period, I couldn't come. Yeah. And once I got the green card, then I said, I have to do something. You know, I, now I'm legal. Right. So I didn't know what to do. Uh, I started working in the airlines. I went to the airlines, picking up the baggage, throwing baggage. And they also sent me a college there. Mm -hmm. So I become an air, uh, aircraft engineer, the aircraft mechanic. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I worked with, uh, then, then it's called Eastern Airlines. So they hired me. They sent me to school. It was like a seven-month course. So basic things, you know, look, looking at the radar in the rudders in the back and the landing gear flaps. So I worked for almost uh, 18 years wow. with the airlines while I opened my restaurant. Right. I mean, that the thing gave me my bread and... The kind of capital. Yeah. So yeah. I worked in the airlines, started the Eastern Airlines, then I, it became a Continental Airlines. Uh, so Continental Airlines head office was in, uh, in Houston. Mm -hmm. So I was working for airlines, then I met my wife, got married, and uh, she was working for JP Morgan after her certain age, certain years, she has to take it, move for a different state for, you know, transport and come back. So we decided to go to Texas, Houston. So I followed her. And uh, I had gone to Texas many times for the aircraft problems. Then I loved it, Texas, and I said, I got to do something here. Mm. So I had little money here and there collected, and I had little the experience working in the restaurant while well, I was working at the airlines, I was still doing the part time jobs because I needed a little money to build something. Right. So I work eight hours airline, then come back work in the restaurant part time here and there. Mm -hmm. I'm already married, no, no kids that time. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, I got to save some money to do something. Right. So I opened my first restaurant uh, in Houston. It was 1999. Wow. Yeah, that was my first restaurant. I started as a UD UPI Udupi mm -hmm. and uh, some of the, uh, you know, I believe in those horoscopes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of uh, a horoscope guy happened to me in that restaurant. He said, why don't you change to UDIPI? I said, why? Because of your birth thing. And, I, you know, I, I'm very super sitting guy. I believe yeah, that thing. Yeah. I went and changed from UDIPI to UDIPI. Uh -huh. Now my restaurant is called UDIPI. Mm -hmm. So to be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, I had one restaurant in 1999. Then uh, by 2003, I had eight restaurants uh, in the span of four years. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, the the kind of, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, you you got 
more than what you deserve but uh, you know the hard working nature behind everything is yeah. quite evident like working uh, you know not just working one job but working uh, odd jobs you know, odd yeah, jobs yeah. to kind of uh, right. save, yeah. save up and all that right. and that energy i am sure went into the restaurant business when you started and that kind of helped you grow that's tr- that's true but my whole mentality was like this uh, if i came to this country with 500 dollars mm-hmm. okay even if i make 500 work mm-hmm. i may win that right yeah beautiful yeah true and um, that was i thought mm-hmm. and everything when i took it as a challenge i never t- took it anything as easy mm-hmm. i always thought what happens if i close down what happens i lose money i always had a plan a and b you know that's how i had eight restaurants i couldn't manage all of them eight then i made a mistake i think i my opening eight restaurant but um, you know the the experience i got by opening one next level and the third at the beginning of the restaurant i used to ask help to from the people uh how to get a permit how to do the you know environmental certification the hotel management certification everything up now once i started one two three then i had uh, so much knowledge that i don't needed no help from nobody mm. so that saved me almost 30 to 40000 dollars there the yeah. fees itself yeah. for the consultation fee mm. so that was easy for me to go out to open the yeah. next restaurant yeah. Yeah, right. it was an experience yeah. yeah so during all these <clears throat> uh, years what what was uh, i mean uh, were you kind of uh, cycling how how was that cycling sir? okay cycling is a bad ending for me when i landed in new york mm-hmm. the first day when we finished traveling i find a friend of ours and he gave me a place to stay mm-hmm. and uh he we we rode from brooklyn railway station to his house we parked the bicycle both of us we went upstairs with the bags to mm-hmm. come back and pick up the bike after the bike was gone Wow. That was almost 10 minutes, not less than less than 10 minutes. Oh, Our both cool. bike was gone. Oh. Right. So we couldn't find. Went to the police station, gave a report, everything was there, and um I'd be never found out by. Mm. So that was a bad experience in New York for us, in the US itself. <laughs> and um I thought the US is it's a very bad place, you know. <laughs> When you get that kind of a experience, yeah. you everything you look at is bad. Yeah. You know, look at the people, can I trust him? who's the thief here <laughs> you know you always look your back who's behind you in especially new york city yeah. anything can happen you know that's why they call the the city never sleeps yeah. so it it was a bad experience and i would say it was a good experience same like uh i, I when i was telling someone if i would have selected for asia i don't think i would have gone to us mm-hmm. maybe it has happened for the good reason because i wasn't selected for asia that's what my mom told me Right. She said, "If you would have elected for the Asia at that time, I don't think you would have gone to US. And today, who we are? Because when she came to US, right, and she saw what I was, and she told me that word, I still remember. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, in a way, everything happens yeah. for a reason. For, for some reason, for good reason. For a good reason. Yeah. And uh, if not for that uh, freak accident that you had, where, right. where you broke your ankle. Right. Right. I mean, there there would have been a good chance that right. you were. I would have been selected. Yes. Yeah." yeah. so yeah and coming back to you know cycle you know, cycling as you were uh, so you lost your bike yeah then when did you kind of pick up uh, because you yeah. didn't ride a bike right. and all that how did, when did you pick the uh, cycling back okay 2002 my first son was born mm-hmm. and uh no i'm sorry the, my, my son is now 29 so 1995 somewhere he was 5 years old mm. so i bought a bicycle for him <laughs> right then i said i have to buy a bike myself so i can ride with him to just right. encourage him you know swimming biking riding and all right. the stuff so when i see all these riders every time i drive in houston i see a lot of riders riding i said i got to get into it yeah. so I, i had few friends who come to my restaurant vegetarians and they say man i see all your pictures up here why don't you come and ride with us mm. so i said yeah sure i will try then i went and bought one my bike schwinn bike it was the cheapest bike i can find mm. the about the 800 dollar bike so i went started riding with them then after that i never turned back mm. it brought my all memories back looking at the bangalore rides and all the friends the now you know what cycling family is totally different you know one cycling family is different mm-hmm. you know everybody looks out look after everybody everybody is so friendly something happened they come to you talk to you 
So that got, that gave me happiness that my business did not give me. End of the day, so much problem I have in the business or any, any other personal issues. I take a bike and ride. I forget about everything. And I said, this is the best thing you can do in life is to do what you love to do. The, the bicycle is the one I always love. And the bicycle is the one who got me where I am today because that is the one got me to years. That is the one took me, I, I didn't ride for almost 20 years. I come back to ride. And, you know, I'm still, I'm 65 now. I'm still riding. I got many bikes, which, uh, <laughs> I, 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 as I told you before, it's a midlife crisis. Right. But I like it. You know, my wife is very supportive. Mm -hmm. She wakes up in the morning. Hey, you want to ride today? Mm -hmm. Weather is good. No wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and my son rides. Uh, my son, Sadevi, rides. Uh, mm -hmm. He rides for a big uh, cycle group in Houston. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, from, uh, how, how was... Uh, Again, taking you back a little bit, um, how was uh, the riding in Bangalore? How was uh, uh, <clears throat> paint as a picture? How the roads were? How were the like? What were your usual routes, riding yeah. routes like? And stuff? We, I lived in Chamlajpet, fifth main road, right there in the corner. So most of the bike riders will come to Chamlajpet, or we meet them at it's called Blue. It's a blue club or, club or something or something in Nakalapa circle. Mm -hmm. So we had few bike riders. Then I met most of them. Lingraju was a state level rider. The uh, other than Bujapur riders, we had about about bunch handful of uh, riders here mm -hmm. in Chamrajpet from and from Cox Town and Fraser Town. Mm -hmm. Riders will come, or we'll go with ride with them or ride with the roads were very nice those days. No traffic. Mm -hmm. It was so. It's like riding was like a breeze. Yeah. You can close your eyes, nothing to worry, no potholes, nothing with the crack, no trucks coming in front of you, no buses crossing you. You just ride, you know, stop everywhere you want. Even the tender coconut guy would not take money from us. That's how nice those days. Yeah. And uh, it was very nice. Get up in the morning, four o'clock, everybody will come. Uh, once we got serious about riding, then we choose which road we have to ride when the race is coming, so we have to get ready. Our normal road was mostly was Bangalore because we stayed in southern part of Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So Bangalore, Chamrajpet to Birdi, uh, the short ride, and the some days to Ramnagar. That's it. Mm -hmm. And the weekends is always Kanakpura. Always Kanakpura, and because that was always, most of the races in Bangalore those days was Bangalore Kanakpura race. Oh, yeah, nice. so it was always. We had a couple of Mandya riders, then we had some riders from Sakleshpura. They all used to come to Bangalore, we used to ride with them, you know, on the racing day when the race comes up, like 10 days before they all come, you know, so we ride together. It was, it was so fun, yeah. you know. We didn't have much money, we didn't have much equipment. We had those helmets from the, in the army store, go get the helmet, you know, the, the no clicks, clip on, you know, I mean, slip on uh, clips. Mm -hmm. Those kind of no cycling shoes, just the sneakers, yeah. butter sneakers. <laughs> you know, those, those are the days. Um, I mean, uh, money can't buy those experiences. The happiness what we had those that even we didn't had much, we felt we had everything. Right. You know, that's how it was. Yeah, amazing, amazing. yeah. And now, um, now you ride in Bangalore yeah. when you are here. Yeah. And uh, what are what are the primary things that kind of strike you as different and what are the things that still remain kind of strange? I really don't want to write it back it's scary now <laughs> yeah I go I, I did a couple of rides I tell my Venki yeah. so in his car took me down to Hebal from Hebal I ride all the way to Nandi and come back yeah. that is the safest one uh, one day I rode from Hebal to Chamrajpet <laughs> You have no idea. I I thought about all the God's name I can think of just to reach. I was so scared. I was so scared. Means I, the people will come right over you. Yeah. I mean, those days are different than today. Uh, I would not even recommend someone to ride it. Bangalore with the cleats. The traffic, yeah, 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 traffic is very bad, and uh, it's not mean drivers. Mm. Maybe the circumstances like that, the people just don't look at you, just like ignore and they're right. It is scary. Bangalore is very scary. It is not, I wouldn't say it is a friendly, <laughs> bike friendly roads here, but um, I see a lot of, I never seen so much bike riders in my lifetime. I never thought I will see that many bike riders in Bangalore today. Uh, I, I'm very proud. Yeah. Yeah. Proud for the bicycle fraternities here. Yeah. Yeah. Riding in the city is. Yeah. yeah. No right. Find the easiest way to right. get out of the city, right. and then <laughs> yeah. you know, do all right. Yeah, that's the only minus point. Other than that, Bangalore, 
Uh, I loved Bangalore then. I still love Bangalore, but it's not the same Bangalore. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Bangalore which I seen. I wish it was here. Yeah. It is still there. The charm is there. You know, the the the, the culture, the people. Uh, it might a little bit change, but the what Bangalore I seen is not there at yeah. all. You know, but uh, the charm is there. The 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 energy, the people, the friendliness. It's, everything is there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, what? What is the uh, kind of riding that you do nowadays? And I do mostly endurance riding. I I don't do race or anything. I I do ride with most of the guys who race, you know, and they feel pretty on me. They slow down a little bit, <laughs> so I can catch up with them. I normally ride in US at least five days a week. I try to do five, for hundred percent, if not four for sure. Right. And if I do Austin Austin catering or I have a catering summer, I take my bike with me. Okay. So after the catering, I go ride, so solo, yeah. and and uh, my target is at least 150 miles a week. Right. Yeah, last year I I rode almost 12,000 miles. Mm -hmm. This year I again I had ankle surgery and everything because fell down. Mm -hmm. uh, I now I think I about 5,600 miles. Yeah, right. so and I, I ride because it's like addiction. Yeah, it's not that you want to ride. Get, you go to sleep at night. I suggest maybe I might not ride tomorrow morning. Then get up in the morning, I already have my shoes on, my you know, hydration bottles ready, my protein ready, my gel is in the backpack. On the road, my wife goes, you're going to ride today? So I'm on the way. <laughs> so it's like addiction, you know. Once you're a cyclist, you're always a cyclist, no matter what. That's the one thing nobody can take away from you. Even if you don't ride, you feel like it's a pride. When I see the guys riding, I say, I was doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, something that stays with you. Yeah. yeah. So now... Uh... Coming to since we are on TFM, yeah. Uh, what uh, you know? What are your views on this tour? How do you like it? This is uh, always I wanted to do it, but not TFN. I didn't know about TFN until last year. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to come here and write because every time I come to India, I come very often. Mm -hmm. Every time I take a car from the airport home, I see bike riders. I said, wow, look at them. When I was riding, never seen a bike rider. So I see all these expensive car Lago bikes, Pinarello, Specialized, that's work. I'm like, wow, look at this. And very uh, professional bike riders, very disciplined bike riders. I see on the road. So I want to come and ride with them once. Then Venki was a very good friend, and he's a cyclist. He owns a store. And I talked to him one day. I said, man, I want to come. He said, come on, anytime you don't need a bike. I have a lot of bikes. So last year was my first ride here. You know, I come every year. I always wanted to ride. Last year was the first ride. Then um, uh, I happened to come for my cousin's wedding. Then I called Venki. I said, I booked the ticket. I'm on the way. He said, hey, I have a TFN. Then I said, what TFN? <laughs> he said, I'm going to send you the link. I look at it. I said, I have to do this. Yeah. Not knowing what the elevation is. <laughs> it's on the meter yeah. and it's the kilometer. I, I get a little confused. I said, I, I want to do it. Yeah. Then I wasn't sure I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm glad I signed up. The organization seems to be very nice so far, uh, well organized. And I will not to talk about road, that's nothing to do with organization. Yeah. That is something. Uh, and the riders are very professional, very courteous, and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying right. Uh, this was the this was for me like a dream come true that I wanted to ride in India. Yeah. And this is one of a challenge. I never did this kind of elevation for God knows how many years. I had done before, then no Strava, no meter, nothing. I had gone to Nandi God knows how many times. Right. I don't know how many times with Charmadi got and uh, Shirari got and all of the stuff. Never even thought in a one, one day, what is the elevation? Now I think what's the elevation, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I, I want to set my mind. Am I able to do it? Yeah. Those days, I never thought about it. Just take a bike. I go to from Bangalore, ride all the way to Kotihara. Stop there, wait for the buses to come. And I'll compete with the buses. Yes. You know, right from there to Ujjurai, downhill. You know, well, that's what I was telling you. I put my leg in between the frame and to hold the brakes. Yeah. <laughs> that's how crazy riding it was. Now, I think this, this organization is doing an excellent job promoting cycling, mm -hmm. as well as tourism, bringing to places like this. As well, I see a few... Foreign riders are here from Canada, some of them from Finland, some of them from England. You know, this bring Ireland, yeah, they're bringing together. That, that's really good. Not only a ride, it also promoting a culture, showing the people what it is, and encouraging the riders. And I see all the riders from Gujarat and the Bombay. I see riders from Delhi and Punjab. It's very good. And I get an experience that I never, never wish I could get it in India. Yeah. It is very nice. I'm very proud that I'm part of it and uh, wish this organization all the very best for the next many more years to come in maybe better 
you know, I mean, they're doing excellent. The hotels are good. The food is good. You can't beat the food. In India, you come here, yeah. you know, every 10 miles, the culture changes, the food changes, the weather changes. Man, this food, you know, I give up everything for it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, you know, it has been a fantastic conversation. Yeah. Talking to you and going on and learning about your journey. Um, I want to, uh, I want you to share a few tips for, uh, you know, working at Let's Day kind of uh, do well at, uh, you know, sport. And... Well, I'm not a mentor who can advise someone, but all I can say is do the things what you love to do. Just don't do because for the sake of it. You are on the road, you want to ride a bike, respect others, smile and ride. Yeah. And have a happy miles and a safe rides. That's all I can say. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Satish. It's been a fantastic honor sitting yeah. with you and uh, you know, sharing these moments. No, thank you. Yeah. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Give me an opportunity where I can share my experience. And I hope uh, someone can make use of my experience and appreciate having me here. Thank you so much. That was my conversation with Satish. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are enjoying this podcast and are finding them useful, please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to it on YouTube as well as on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps. Thanks again for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest.